Okay, stop. Okay, so I came here from Warsaw. It is in the right top corner, directly to Barcelona, which is a beautiful city, the best city, definitely. And okay, today we will talk about building modern stuff, modern website, web apps with GraphQL. So, GraphQL. First question would be what? What is GraphQL? What is GraphQL? So, GraphQL is a data query language, which means that it's not a protocol, it's not a like local storage thing, stuff like this. It's like data query language. And this is like more just like a spec, like the uh, few rules to, uh, oh guys, you are really hitting the Twitter. <laughs> My wrist is like, Rrr. okay, so Facebook. The GraphQL was invented by Facebook and it's used since internally in production since 2012, but it was open sourced in, uh, I think that was uh, May in 2012. That was a uh, first commit. And this is, the GraphQL is a response to what modern web app needs. And what, it, what I mean by that is why? Why, this is the next question. Why Facebook invented GraphQL? So, um, it was invented during the movement from uh, HTML, HTML apps, mobile app of Facebook, to be native. So, you guys probably remember how this uh, app sucks. Like, it's really, literally sucks. Like, it was hanging out and it was slow and stuff like this. So, Facebook did a big no to the rest and uh, he invented some new tool. And what it solves, it's like, one of the problem was that uh, on mobile devices you don't want to uh, overfetch the network, so you get this with REST, you get this multiple, uh, multiple round trips which may overload the network, so uh, in GraphQL you get like one request or two, basically uh, you can combine those round trips into just one, which I will show you later. This is one of the features of Apollo. And in GraphQL clients, in uh, REST and other things, other, uh, other ways of fetching API, it means that uh, in GraphQL uh, you get the separation between client and a server. So it means that uh, if your API, which is GraphQL based, uh, is changing, like it changed and you don't need to rewrite all the scripts. Like, you know, with mobile apps you get the, there are many platforms like Android, iOS, and with GraphQL you get the same way of fetching data. It's, it's even on the browser, web browser and stuff like this. So, uh, it means that when you, when something changed, like with REST and stuff, you get the versioning and you get the V1, V2, V3 and stuff like this. And you need to update your clients too. And with GraphQL, it solves. Like, it's solved by Facebook and GraphQL. It's like really cool. So, the next, you guys are from Angular, I think. So, like, of, you familiar with Angular, so you know the TypeScript. So, with GraphQL, you get the same experience, which means that, uh, like, GraphQL is strongly typed. It stands for, okay, so GraphQL is strongly typed. And it means that you have types, you have, uh, you have basically the same thing as in TypeScript, and you can, you have the validation, but while you write in it, so write in it. So um, it means then you can find many bugs while, while writing your app. So it's very powerful in my, in my opinion. So the next step, the next thing is that GraphQL is self-documented. What it means that like um, with every other uh, API, uh, you get the I don't know like you. Mm, you need to uh, have extra resources to build uh, documentation. And you can write, like, you're writing an API and you spend a lot of time to create a documentation to keep it in a shape and stuff. So with GraphQL, GraphQL is self-documented. It means when you're writing a GraphQL queries, GraphQL types, etc., you get the documentation. Like, it's really powerful. And it is possible because of introspection. You can, like, I will, tell you guys later about the introspection, we will get uh, deeply into it, but it means that you can ask a server uh, what query, like you can ask API what queries uh, it handles. So, 
and what types there are defined and stuff like this. So the next question would be, where is a place for GraphQL? And this is a chart I created. And as you can see, there is a client and there is a server. And client, which means there are mobile apps, web apps, um, uh, GraphQL and Apollo, and there is a, another library called, uh, called Relay. Uh, this is the client side libraries. OK, so uh, GraphQL was invented to mostly to solve a bunch of problems uh, and issues uh, in mobile apps. But you can also use it in a web app. And with a lot of help from Apollo Stack and Relay, you can get like easily implement the GraphQL inside your client side app, and which means that like those two frameworks works uh, like basically the same way. So it's fetching like you. Mm. It prepares the GraphQL document to be translated into string and then put in like send it to a server. So um, yeah. So there is a server, and you get like by server I mean micro microservices, databases, and even the external APIs. And GraphQL is in between, as you can see. So it's live, it lives on top of the client and also on top of the server. And what does it mean? It means that GraphQL is a like it's a way of communication, communication between client and a server. So it decouples things, which is really important. And uh, yeah. So let's move on. And how does GraphQL look like? This is a query. This is like hello world inside the like in the GraphQL world. You get the me, which is like I don't know, maybe currently logged in user, and you fetch the uh, name of that user. And as you can see, this is like you're really familiar with it because uh, it looks like a JSON, ob JSON object. It has the same structure. And yeah, it's also really powerful, but let's look what does GraphQL solve. Uh, I talked about the self documenting part, and this is like you get the API, I will, I, I will show it to you later, but uh, there is a tool called Graphical, which we will head into it. But, and as you can see, uh, you can get by the introspection, which gives you the, um, the, like the schema and stuff from the GraphQL, and you can create documents like this based on the introspection. And even with introspection, you can create, uh, there is a plugin in IntelliJ, Intelli IDE, uh, that checks if, uh, while you're writing a query and things, it checks if, it's, uh, if there is a bug, if this thing exists and stuff. So it also solves the problem with over data. This is, uh, <laughs> that's nice. I haven't, okay. So as you can see, uh, this is like a REST response from the REST API. And you get the author, you get the bio, first name, stuff like this. But this is a list of something. Like this is a feed, this is a list of, I don't know, posts and stuff. So you, you do want to get the author, but you want to only get a like, picture, surname, and username. That's it, and the ID. But you don't need a bio, first name, and yeah. And with REST, you get the, and many other, APIs, you get the whole bunch of data that you don't really need. Like you, your components in Angular and in React, anyone, anything, any framework, uh, you want to expose like few fields and that's it. And other problem that is solved by uh, GraphQL is that, uh, as you can see, like mm, we get a list of something, like of photos, and you get the link to it. So it's, it redirects you to, uh, to the endpoint with uh, uh, data for that photo. And this way you get the one request to fetch the list of things. And then for each thing you get another request, which is, yeah, and with GraphQL you can solve it. And this is, this is really powerful. So what is the future? So GraphQL will try to solve the real-time data updates. So it gives you the, it would give you the experience of real-time uh, real thing in your app. And uh, imagine that you want to fetch a lot of data, like a big structure, but you don't, like, you want to fetch only a bunch of them at the very beginning, and then, like, uh, and then, uh, 
uh, I don't know how to say, but okay, so you have like the whole document and you want to get only like five fields and then you want to add those, like there is an important field, like I don't know, maybe a name of the user, but then you get the like s another fields that are not so important and you want to fetch them like, I don't know, in a, like not in the same time, you know? So you get the, like you mark those fields as uh, as the important one and those fields are uh, fetched right uh, after you do the request and then other fields are uh, fetched like some time later. So it's really powerful. But this is a, this is a, like Facebook owned the GraphQL. They are maintaining it and stuff. So if there is a thing that they don't need internally, it means that without community, uh, there won't be any feature. So, yeah, that's the that's the whole point. So, okay, but who is using GraphQL? As you can see, Facebook, of course. But the good thing is that um, it really increases rapidly because GitHub, GitHub, uh, I don't know, maybe one month ago, announced that uh, they're working and they have a, a developer preview of their API, but in GraphQL, which is like huge for the GraphQL community and stuff. So let's move to the actual GraphQL. In GraphQL we get queries, and a query is a way to fetch data. So, uh, and query as you can see, um, it's really powerful because you declare exact data that your component, that your app needs, and just just while you're writing an app. So it's uh, when you create a component and you want like, I don't know, a bunch of fields, you write them and that's it. And you get the those fields in response. And the good thing about uh, GraphQL is that it models data the same way we think about the data in real time, real life. So uh, as you can see, the JSON object is pretty much like uh, pretty familiar with that what we think uh, about the data structure. Like, you get the XML and it's not so readable and stuff. So with, uh, uh, with uh, JSON it's more, uh, more readable, more human friendly. So, and it's designed to be fast and efficient. So if your query takes a long time to process, it means that your query is written in the wrong way. So it's supposed to work really fast and really efficient. And the best thing is that results look the same as the query. So if you want to fetch the me and then the login or username field, you get the same result, but as a JSON object. And I, as I said before, that uh, those features allows to component to fetch their own data, exactly what they need. So this is how query looks like, and this is what the result looks like. And that's cool. Like you get exactly the same data, you, you want me and you want name, and you get this, and that's, that's, that's cool. So in Apollo, it looks like this, but we won't get into it more deeply, we will do it in a workshop. So mutations. Uh, imagine that mutation is a post request, in a gra in, but in GraphQL world. So it means that um, if you want to add some object, you want to manipulate the data, you want to change the object, you get, like, it's called mutation. And mutation looks like this. And you get the mutation, you get the variables, and this is a mutation that is defined on the server. So it takes content, and the good thing is that mutations are working the same way as, as query. So this mutation returns the comment object, and you get you, sp you can specify what data you need. So we need a content and create that, and that's it. You get the same data, and this is the data of recently created object, which is which is cool, and it looks like this in Apollo. But as I said, we won't talk about this. So what about features? As I said, it's self-documenting, and it's self-documenting. So you get the introspection, and introspection. Like you can, as I said, you can uh, query the data, like you can type something like this, and you get the types and the name of the types, and this is the result. So with GraphQL you can ask what schema 
is defined on the server side. So with REST API and other, uh, you can really tell. Like, uh, if there is no documentation, you just like you can't, and that's not good. Like, mm, let me show you the example. Uh, okay, it's working. So I was talking about GraphQL, and GraphQL is an in-browser IDE to to look up the uh, GraphQL server. So this is where introspection kicks in. You get the docs, which is like it's self-written, and we get the query. So this is like an example app we will do on the workshop. So as you can see, it, there is a fit, and fit contains entries. Those this is entry is a type. So if you get the um, you get the feed, you get RI of list of items, items, and you get the those uh, those fields. And this is uh, let me show you. Let's say we don't know what data looks like, like what is the query, what are the queries and stuff. So we can go uh, to the docs. Let me check it. Okay, to the docs, you get uh, the query, and it, this is like. Those are the root queries. So we want to get a feed. Okay, so feed. Okay, that's it. Let's go here. And this is an array of entry type objects. So uh, there is a ID. Okay, let's call ID. And there is a uh, maybe created at. Okay, and as you can see with introspection, you get the auto completion, which is really powerful and really cool. So let me just, okay. And you get the, like, with REST to do the nested queries, you would, uh, as, you, I, as I showed you, you get the, like, you have to specify the uh, link to the other resource, like to the other endpoint, to get the, like, w if there is a list of users, and each user have their own, like, the user type have their own endpoint, uh, you have to, like, do the first request, then do each request for each user. And with GraphQL, you can do this inside one query. And as you can see, there is a repository field. And this is like, oh, okay, so the repository field. And this is a nested query, which is, which is cool. And we get something like this. And what name, okay, what fields, name, and let's say, owner. And that's it. You get one request, and then you get the other request. And you doesn't really care because uh, server uh, should handle it. You, in client side, you have to like you have to know how to fetch data, what data this API uh, receive, and that's it. You want to fetch this type of object, like in this structure, and you get this. You don't really care how this is hap how this happens. So that's cool, and we can do okay. So as I said, this is mm, an example of, uh, as you can see, this is, a, oh, this is a repository type. Those are the fields. And those information come from this. And this uh, is defined on the GraphQL server. And the good thing about GraphQL, which I haven't talked, but OK, uh, is that uh, every GraphQL server works with every GraphQL client. It means that you can use Apollo, you can use Relay, anything you want, you can even write your own, and it works like just this, just like this. Because of that, uh, because of that, GraphQL is a data query language, that's it. And yeah, you get the introspection, and this is how I showed you, and let's move on. So I told you guys that with REST you get a bunch of requests, there, there are like unnecessary, and in Apollo, and also I think in Relay, you get the query batching. And what it means, imagine that this is an Instagram page, and imagine that this is a component, and this is a component, and here is another component, like I showed you guys here, and each component do their own request. So you get one request, and another, and another, and another. So you would like, like you would, it would take eight round trips, like eight requests, but with query batching, you get only one. And how it works? This way. So those boxes are a GraphQL query call. And as you can see, all the uh, GraphQL calls happen inside the in 
10 milliseconds. And if like you have hundreds of them or just two or anything, if it happens, the if all happens in uh, 10 milliseconds, it it's wrapped and it's patched into one actual request. So with this, you won't get uh, like I don't know for seven requests, you get only one, which is like huge. And yeah, that's it. So and. Uh, Let's talk about user experience. And in your app, you want the user uh, see the result immediately. So uh, we were in a area that, uh, let's say, we all remember the websites where you have the loading indicator. And it was annoying, because you, you, you're supposed to wait and wait after the pages load and stuff like this. But with Apollo and GraphQL, you can easily, this is an example, you can easily uh, fix it, like solve it. And as you can see, I'm writing a comment. I hit the submit button, and immediately we have, uh, we have it inside the uh, list, of comp list of comments. And as you can see, there is a, here, uh, the update happens even before the actual request. So. This is how the optimistic UI works. And this is a schema. So we do a mutation, which is, a, as I told you, the day of manipulating data, changing it. And we hit the submit button. Then uh, this happens in the same time. We're sending a request. And also, we're changing the UI. And this is an optimistic response. So we're changing the UI. This is the UI. This is our home. And it immediately displays on a website. But what about this request? Uh, it hits the server. Server calculates it, prepares the data, prepares the result. And if it's, if it's the same result, the UI stays the same. But if it's not, uh, it invalidates that and changes. So that's also cool. So let's move to the other feature, uh, which is uh, prefetching. This is another feature that helps you to increase your using experience of your apps. And this is how it works. OK, so as you can see, when we hit the view comments, we get into another website. And then on this, uh, on this page, uh, the query with list of comments are, like, is being fetched after we hit the, uh, like after we in, in it the component. But with, this is without prefetching. So with prefetching, we can do this. What it means, when you go to the view comments, the data is already fetched. And with, oh, as you can see, the result uh, is, oh, the page is loading immediately. And this is how it works. Uh, Apollo uses cache. Basically, Apollo is a tool to manipulate the data uh, network and to cache the result. So we can get something like this. This is a query. Uh, you call the query, then it hits the cache. And if there is a result in a cache, it changes the UI immediately. Like this is the immediate response. But if it's not, a ca if it's not in the cache, it hits the server. So with this, you, you, mm, like it's important on the mobile apps because you don't want to do multiple requests when the data is uh, inside an app. So it helps a lot with that. And let's move on. So subscriptions. With GraphQL, uh, subscriptions allow you to, uh, to get the real-time experience. And what I mean by that is that um, when you create a subscription and, a, and it's, a, I don't know, maybe a list of comments, and when someone uh, writes a comment, you want to be notified about it. And with uh, subscription, you can, you can uh, really achieve it. And as you can see, there is a schema. So those are the clients. Those are the subscribers. Like, I don't know, maybe this is a web app. This is a mobile app or something, not important. And you have an action, like adding comments. And it means that you do a mutation. It hits the pub sub system. Uh, and it gets the, uh, it brings the result to the GraphQL. And in response, you get the actual result. And then uh, it publish, like pushes the changes into those clients. So you always be notified about it. And the good thing about GraphQL is that, and Apollo, is that we achieved 
something like server-side rendering. It's, it's uh, like you are able to uh, use uh, Angular Universal with Apollo, with Apollo client, which is very cool. And it yet again increases your like, user experience of your app. And that's cool. And you can, if you click the, on the slides, I will, those are the rings, but I will provide it to you later. When you click it, you get the um, example of how to start working with Universal and Apollo. It's like built. And the good thing about Angular is that they are working on ahead of time compilation. This is currently uh, a work in progress because it's not possible to uh, do some stuff, but they in, internally in Angular working on it. So if there will be a fix, then you will support ahead of time, which is which is cool. And and also, if you guys, because a lot of companies and a lot of a lot of uh, web developers still using the Angular one, and recently we announced the Angular JS client for Apollo, which is uh, which is also cool because. You can use it like right now inside your apps, and it's it's pulled on top of the promises. So, okay. So I told you about Graph, uh, GraphQL. I told you about REST and other APIs, but how to do the real migration? As you can see, the as you would as as you uh, seen that uh, GraphQL lives on top of the server and on top of the client. And what it means that mm, you can wrap your existing API into GraphQL. So Instead of uh, hitting the I don't know uh, slash API slash get user, you can create a query inside the GraphQL, and that query um, fetches the data from the uh, from the from the REST endpoint. So as you can see, you can uh, get the REST, you can get the GraphQL server working side by side, and this is really important because you can slowly move into GraphQL fully to be fully supported. And let me show you how the data is resolved. So, uh, okay, so we can now go to this. This is a basic example, okay? And I don't want to get into details, but this is a schema. Let's see. Uh, okay, this is a schema. So we get entry, and those are the fields. And as you can see, this is a flow, this is a string, this is an int, and stuff like this. And how to resolve that thing? Uh, GraphQL doesn't really care what the uh, database and what the uh, actual source of those uh, data is. So you can put the entry object, then put the fields, and return any type of data you want. So you can put here, like, I don't know, return, uh, I don't know, maybe null or something like this. And when the, okay. And when the query hits the server, it gets to the schema. Then schema try to resolve the data. So you get to this point. And you can basically return any type of data you want. So it's really, it's really huge. And OK, so let's back to the slides. And uh, if you guys want to learn more about GraphQL, you can get into GraphQL org. Or this is like, this is the official website of GraphQL. It's made by Facebook, and recently they updated it, so it's really cool. Like, uh, there's a lot of uh, resources and a lot of uh, information about it. But if you want to learn more about Apollo, which is basically the only client that integrates the Angular 2 with GraphQL, you can go to that website. And there is a, another good resource that is called Learn GraphQL. It's a step-by-step -step process to create a query, to create a server, then create a query, and resolvers and stuff like this. And I think, in my opinion, it's the best way to learn GraphQL in general. This is like the very start for it. So, gracias. Oh, this was nice. That was not like buongiorno. And yeah, it was fun to meet you guys. And uh, I uh, showed you the Twitter handle and. Uh, uh, all the handles for like you know, GitHub and uh, uh, Gmail. So feel free to message me if you have, if you guys have any question about the GraphQL or Angular 2 or something like this. I will definitely answer to all of them. And visit Poland. Like come to Poland anytime you want. Like we have a lot of meetups. Maybe not that good as Angular JS, like Angular JS beers. Like no, we don't have any of that. <laughs> like it's so well organized. And yeah, bye. <laughs> Thank you.
Thank you, guys. <laughs>